Hey guys, what's up? It's Shade coming to you guys with um just some thoughts that I've been having um today about what pertains to my title, which is how many boyfriends does it take to find love? Um kind of mimicking the question, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. But the answer to my question um, my rhetorical question, because it's not really a question that I'm asking, it's a question that I've answered. Um, the answer is none. The answer is there are no amount, there is no amount of men that you can intimately tie yourself to or be involved with and think that, you know, in that you are going to be able to sustain full-on love, unconditional love, because the number one factor that you're missing in identifying love in other people in companionship first before identif is the number one problem is identifying love in people in companionship before you identify it in self. And for some reason, I'm not sure if it's through Western culture um, and ideals and ideologies, I just said the same thing twice, my bad, but I'm not sure if it's that or whatever it is, but we have this idea of thinking that love can only exist outside of self, which a lot of it does, you know. The essence of love has a lot to do with sharing, sharing love, you know. When you are liked, you share light, you know, but it's you cannot... Share it without having it for yourself first. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you can't share knowledge if you don't have knowledge. You can't share anything that you don't have because you do not own it. You do not possess it. It's not a part of your being. And that is why you can't seek relationships outside of an intimate relationship with yourself first. And I feel like that's, I feel like that should be first-hand knowledge, but for me growing up, that wasn't something that I understood or identified with because of how love was portrayed to me through media, um, through the relationships that I saw with other people. I just always assumed, you know, that self-love was kind of just already innately there. It wasn't something that, you know, you had to work on or think about because it's like, oh yeah, it's already there. I love myself I, of course I can love somebody else, you know, and it wasn't until, you know, in the midst of loving somebody else and having the idea of love being completely de destroyed by, you know, us trying to limit it and put, not labels on it, but put certain ideals and um, confinements on it that I learned I had a lack of love for self that I was insecure and that I kind of like always ran into these things of like the reason I would run to relationships is because of the lack of relationships that I had with people that I felt like were obligated to me like my mom however I digress from that I know you guys are looking for a talk for a conversational a commentary on that relationship that I have with her but it's kind of hard to verbalize because it's always like um, teetering, you know, on love and, um, not hate. It's, there's another word, disdain, I think. Um, yeah, it's always teetering on that. So, if even the word would be love, even. But anyways, um, digressing from that. So I just kind of wanted to do a run through of like all my relationships and things that I've learned in them and things that I just felt like sharing, not just for you guys, but definitely for myself. My YouTube is definitely um, here for documentation purposes and stuff like that. And I just share my journey with you guys because there might be somebody who can relate and feels connected to the things that I'm saying. So, okay, boom. The first relationship I had, um, and I'm not going like in chronological order of of every dude that I've dated. It's more so the ones that stuck out that stuck out and were most important. Um, so my first relationship, um, the one that I've talking about quite a few times, the one where my heart was essentially broken into very 
minute pieces and just was very hard to put back together. Um, that relationship really reflected to me how much I didn't know about loving myself a hundred percent. And the reason I say that is because again, you know, before I started, um, dating him, I always, I always, I, I never had really like low self-esteem like ever. I never really ran into an issue where I looked in the mirror and felt ugly or felt, you know, depressed or felt, you know, just not in tune. I felt saddened because other people would pick on me and stuff like that and I would get bullied and stuff like that. But it wasn't, I wasn't so much bothered by that because of the relationship I had at home with my mom and that was like where my real concerns were but again digressing from that so when I was introduced to this kind of compatibility and it turned into companionship um it was it was very foreign to me and very new I loved it I loved the way that it felt I loved the way it I loved the way love at the time or what I thought to be love at the time looked on me I love the way that it felt. I love how it motivated me, how it inspired me, how it made me feel closer to God than anything. Um, and when it, when parts of it started to become broken and it started to unravel that, you know, the love that I thought it was to be wasn't on account of, like, his cheating, his lying, um, and just many other issues... I I went through like this whole like crazy period of like what what am I not doing as a woman? What am I not doing? What am I not providing? Am I not fucking him good enough? If, am I not, you know, being open enough? Am I not listening enough? Am I not, you know, pretty enough? If, am I not smart enough? You know, like these are all the things that were running through my mind and it was a lot of, you know, as me being the supposed I guess victim not to discount any of the things that he experienced and you know my reactions to the things that he did that could have caused him suffering but you know for me it was like I was I was really going crazy trying to figure out like what was my why I was the issue you know and at the end of the day I happened to realize like I was not the issue you know, the only issue that really was evident was that I did not love myself because after continually taking him back and dealing with him and all that type of stuff, it, it, in retrospect, it didn't make any sense. If you valued yourself, you would have walked away the first time the person did something to dishonor your trust, to dishonor the faith that you put in them, the things that you, 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 you cannot see, you know? That's the faith of a relationship. That's why some relation. That's why relationships are so beautiful. Relationships with anybody because you're put in. A, you're emitting a lot of trust and and just like a lot of energy into somebody, even when you can't essentially see where it's gonna go. You just hope that it's going in the right direction and it's progressive and it's very forward. So. um that first relationship was definitely very hard for me. It definitely made me put a mirror up to me in a sense that I never looked at myself in a sense of an asset. I never looked at myself as an asset unless it was in his eyes. And I didn't feel valuable unless he discerned that I was valuable to him. I only cared about his perceptions and... Now I can I can honestly say that that is not something that I think about. That is not like a uh an issue for me. Like I don't ever put my value in the eyes of another because then I will never be valuable. Because I'll always be looking at myself as a sense of who am I an asset to? When essentially I am an asset to myself, you know? I do a lot <laughs> and I should be damn proud of that and I am now. 6 Set almost going on seven years later. Um, my next relationship that I would say was important was um, quite some time afterwards. And I feel like that relationship was important in the sense that 
it started from such a genuine friendship and it made me value the the importance of friendships in a relationship and being able to talk to your partner like really honestly openly communicate to your partner how you're feeling and why you're feeling that way because we already had the foundation of being friends first it was just just breezy very breezy um the only thing about being friends and then going into relationships it can get very difficult because for some reason when romance and and sexual relations are involved things tend to get messy and they did and we ended up you know coming apart you know and we're still not even in the same place that we were from years ago and I've come to terms with that I came to terms with that quite a quite some time ago but I'll never forget that relationship or that time that was shared because it was so it was exactly what I needed at the time that it happened um I almost wanted to say that it was super genuine, but the only thing is that I felt like he loved me more than I loved him. And the reason I say that is because I was still, I was, I was a damaged good. I still feel like at times, um, you know, my first relationship has, has inhibited me from, you know, really being able to be so trusting. But at the same time, I feel like that's been a good savior for me, a good like net for me. So that I don't fall too hard for the wrong person. I don't mind falling. I just mind falling for the wrong person. But uh, I feel like he was, he kind of scared me so much with his genuinity that I could never fully in tune myself with that because I, I already had previously known what it was like to be involved with someone and them get me to a point where we're both you know, emitting the same energy and then for that person to like swipe the rug from underneath my foot and be like, ha, I got you, you lost, you know, so I could never really get myself to that position and I haven't, but I've been learning and growing to be more trusting and more comforting and to be, to, to know that like, it's, it's okay if relationships come to end, it's not the end of the world. Um, and that's that. Um, this past summer, I would say I got into a relationship. And in the midst of this, I definitely have spoken to other men, but there's only like a few men that really stand out that I can really say like, you know, that changed my life. Like that was like a game changer. But, um, anyways, I met this dude, um, and He opened my mind in a very cultural way. Um, And I've always been very cultural. I've always been very tied to, you know, blackness and, you know, the beauty in it and how triumphant we are despite all of our tribulations. Um, But when he showed, when he introduced me to the purpose of hip hop and the beauty in it, which is something I did not understand before because if you guys saw my um, hood nigga video, I come from a middle class black family. So, you know, when I was younger, I didn't grow up on rap. In fact, I grew up on predominantly pop culture music, you know. So I kind of like have been on a journey into rap music and stuff like that. And right now I'm very affirmed into it. Like I have a keen ear for it and I know what sounds like real hip hop and what doesn't. And I feel like he sharpened my ear for that and for that I I thank him because hip hop is so important to blackness. It is so important and I feel like without him I would still have a part of my eyes closed. I feel like without, you know, him like introducing that to me, that whole world to me in a whole new light, like not in the way where, you know, I'm bumping Drake, in a way where I'm li- I can literally bump to Nas. In a way that I can literally, like, really listen to Tupac and Biggie now, like, on some real shit. You know, like, things, these are things that I definitely would not have done 
a year and a half, two years ago, or just before generally, because I wasn't that into hip hop. And now I am. And I feel like, you know, for that, I'm super thankful. I know it probably doesn't make sense to anybody else that's watching, but if you're into hip hop and you know where it's derived from and, you know, why it's it's been a, a culture changer and a game changer for music universally, then you'll understand why I feel so appreciative of, you know, meeting him and everything like that. The only issue that we had was that he just did, couldn't listen and he couldn't cycle out of his his storm. You know, he would he stays in his storm. He stays in that area and it's crazy because there's oh I always tend to meet people like this. I mean, I'm sure you guys even know people like this who they they say they're so tired of the mess. They say they're they're so over all the drama and all the type of stuff, but they can't seem to escape it because it gives them a certain kind of fuel that they tend to like. They won't admittedly say it, but in their spirit, they know that they like it. And I only know this for a fact because I used to be that person. Like, on the low, when my ex was cheating on me and all that type of stuff, I don't know if you guys remember in Beyonce's song um, from Lem the Lemonade album, but it's there's something that she's saying, I think it's in one of the poems, where she's like, you know, sex became a sedative in the midst of all the things that you know, the man was doing to her. And for me, it was the same thing. Like, in my first relationship, like, I knew he was doing me dirty. I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. And I would ask, and he would lie, and I would ask, and he would lie. And even though the deepest depth of me knew that he was lying, I was still fucking the shit out of him. I definitely was. I definitely was. Because it was genuinely a sedative to know that I still had him at the end of the day. And that sounds terrible, and I'm putting air quotes on that because I know it sounds terrible, and I know that mindset is terrible in and of itself. But that's just how I felt. It was just kind of like that comforting of, like, you're hurting me, but I wouldn't want anyone else to hurt me but you. Terrible. Anybody in that that kind of storm, that kind of cycle, you need to get out of it, like, ASAP, like, right now. Like, I'm not even joking. That shit is dangerous. But, um, yeah. And as of right now, in the midst of me talking to other men, um, because I've been single for a while. Well, before the summer, and I'm before I met this, this young man, I was very much single for a long time. Just talking to dudes and stuff like that. Having intimate relations and stuff like that. As far as like intellectually, some intimately as far as sexually, but not all. Um but I've been I, I haven't, you know, had that kind of relationship where it's like throw it up on the gram. Like I love you, baby. Oh my God, we gonna be together forever. Like I haven't had that relationship since my first relationship. And um yeah, but the the man that I'm talking to now, it's like, even if in time we don't, you know, become anything we are, anything, I appreciate him for opening my mind, again, culturally, but in a different cultural aspect. He, With this one, he's bringing me back to, he's bringing me way back well, how does that song go oh yeah Erica Badu where she's like way back do no no way back yeah I met him when I was a that's um and common is in this song what is that song called y'all know what I'm talking about um damn that's gonna bother me but anyways he brings me back to like Kemet Egypt you know um Mahat Ra all that type of stuff, just a lot of things regarded around, again, blackness, um, Egyptian, hieroglyphics, um, you know, just old Africa, just a lot of things like that, um, just eating healthier, and you know what, I, the thing I love about him is that, like, very duality man, duality man in a sense that I can, we can have like an ignorant conversation, but we can very simultaneously have like a, a woke conversation, you know, and 
I realized, like, in the midst of my dating life, like, as it grows and I, I ascend into, you know, different mental spaces, I attract different kind of men every time I ascend a bit higher. And um, I feel like that's, like, some outward force kind of showing me that every time I make a, an improvement, something is going to reflect that. Masculine energy in particular is going to reflect that because masculine energy and feminine energy, you know, they unite. And I'm not saying that in a sense that um, sex sexually wise all the time because I know there are people who are gay and, you know, identify with other sexual orientations. But masculine energy and feminine energy, we cycle each other. Like you ever see those fish in Pisces where they go, it's like they just cycle you know, they just cycle around. That's how I feel like masculine energy and feminine, feminine energy works or is supposed to work. And, um, yeah, like, he's just, he's just a cool, he's a cool cat. Like, I, I really don't have any complaints and I don't have any expectations. I definitely have removed expectations from, my dating life, if you even want to call it that, because it's definitely not, the my dating life is not intentional the way it used to be. It's not like, oh, I want to date. It just so happens that I attract men, and I've discerned whether or not I'm going to talk to them, and I'm going to engage in whatever kind of conversation with them, um, forthgoing. So, that's that, but, you know, it's just a cool thing to have to, to know that I'm upgrading and not seat changing. Because even if these men are not wealthy in riches, they're wealthy in mind. Every time I talk to a new guy, I learn something new. And that, for me, is important. And that should be important for you ladies watching, too, or whoever is watching. Whoever you are attracted to, or whoever you're intending to grow with, or you see potential with, make sure that they're inspiring you and they're teaching you. And make sure that you're reciprocating that too. Don't come there with nothing to offer. But then again, you you will attract what, what you attract. So, of course, we're going to reciprocate the same energy because at this point I don't have time again for charity cases so once your growth stops it's my intention you know my forwardness stops as well it halts because we're we can't keep we we've hit a block we've hit a wall and we can't keep growing and for me I have to just I have to keep growing into truth I have to keep walking in that purpose and if it's without you then it's just without you people get cut off for the wrong energy with me. I, that is not a joke for me. If your energy is off, holla, I'm going to holla at you. Like I always say, I will meet you in your mess, but I'd never become your mess. So I will not stop fucking with you. I will not, you know... Matter of fact, yes, I will stop fucking with you, but I will never not love you. You feel me? Like, I will never just be like, oh, it's a dub altogether. But if you, you can't get your shit together at that moment in time, I got to leave you behind. Because there's no way I can sit here with you while you act in a mess when I'm trying to walk in purpose and do what is intended for me to do. So, um, hopefully this message reaches someone in good spirits. Um, I don't know what exactly provoked me to make this video, but it was just on my spirit to make. Just know anytime I come here on some webcam shit that I'm coming here with conscious shit. I'm coming here with just shit that's on my mind. My more um, transparent videos, I would say. But y'all know I'm definitely going to come through with the rest of my hair videos and skincare and all that type of stuff. I just like to do things when my spirit takes it. And um, yeah, so again, remember your identity is not in the felt your fellow man or fellow woman womb and it's not it is in self you gratify all the things that are wonderful about you and then you bring that wonderfulness to other people if they deserve it um so yeah that's that's my my message i hope you, all of you guys are well again 
peace and blessings to all my peoples. I love you guys.